And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. By show of hands, who here has been to Rothko Chapel? Some of you seemed very enthusiastic when you raised your hand, (laughs) and some of you less so, so (laughs) I'm hoping this will appeal to all of you. So on Black Friday of last year, I went to Rothko Chapel for the first time. I had been extremely hesitant about going because all I had heard about it is that it was a non-Christian chapel filled with black paintings. And this didn't really appeal to my spirituality at all, Uh, but my friend Shanta was visiting from Austin and she wanted to play tourist in Houston and so I couldn't say no. So it was a very overcast day and we went to Rothko Chapel and um, The first thing I should say, not only were these black paintings, but the Rothko Chapel is named after Mark Rothko, a very uh, popular modern artist who is most well known for extremely bright, highly saturated paintings. And so this was very out of the norm for his style of painting. Um, And and so it just felt like a strange a strange sort of modernist experiment, um, which I wasn't very into. So we go, we enter the Rothko Chapel, we walk into the octagonal room, and we enter into silence and darkness. There's really only a skylight in the center that lights up the room, and because it was so overcast, it was extremely dark. At first, I felt like I really couldn't see anything. Um, Shanta and I decided that we would kind of go on our own paths, and so we sat down at separate benches, and I decided to just sit and contemplate one of these large black canvas paintings. At first, all I saw was the black. All I saw was the darkness. And so I kept sitting. And I kept sitting. And I wondered if other people were having a more interesting experience than me. But after a few minutes, my eyes started to adjust, and I noticed that the canvas was actually not all black. Uh, There were textures of brush strokes from where the paint had been applied. There was deep color, there was emerald, there was navy. And I sat a little bit longer, and and I realized the whole painting had come alive. I I was seeing something I couldn't see five minutes prior. I realized that what I was experiencing was unlike most anything I had experienced before because I was looking at something that had been transformed, but actually nothing had changed. I had been sitting in the room long enough for my eyes to adjust and to notice something different in the painting that had always been there. And since I am a priest and since I was in a chapel, I thought, Maybe this is saying something about God after all. Maybe what it's saying is that in the voids of my life, in the places of darkness, in the places of confusion, in the places where I don't really know what I'm looking at or what's ahead, God is actually moving. God is painting brush strokes on my life. God is bringing color, and God has always been doing this. It just took being transformed enough to notice. So, this brings me to our readings today. Our readings have a lot to do with night. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, but also our psalmist says that he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. When we are tired and in our low places, when we are in pain or grief, when we don't know what's in front of us, when we're angry at the world's violence and the death all around us, God is awake. When Nicodemus visits Jesus by night, for some reason Jesus is awake and seemingly waiting for him. God doesn't take breaks, God works the night shift. And then in 
Genesis 1, which our epistle alludes to, we see that God is present in the void before God forms the light. God is always moving, and we don't need light for that to be true. And our tradition tells us that, in fact, the darkness is sometimes the richest place to find God. I, I'm, I'm focusing on darkness today and trying intentionally not to talk about light at all because I think that light is such a present metaphor for us in Christianity that we're always looking for the day to come or the light of Christ to be here. And I want us to remember that we don't actually have to see any light at all for God to be present, and we don't have to wait for God to be present. So Jesus pushes this metaphor even further when he talks about being born from above or being born again. Um, the interesting thing about this birth language is I think growing up in evangelicalism, I had always thought that I was supposed to be born again and that was up to me to decide. But if you think about what it means to be born, we really have very little to do with our being born. There is no consent for our being born. Um, this is not a process that we can embark on at all on our own. And thinking about uh, pregnancy and birth, I think has so many implications for this idea of being transformed in the darkness. That when we are in the womb, when we are being formed, we have no control over our own nourishment. We have no control over, over the day that we're going to be born or what kind of care we're, we're receiving. But we have to trust that in the darkness we are actually being held and we are being protected and we are held safe with everything that we need. And so when Jesus says you must be born again, and in fact, when he says you must be born from above and then says, I am from above, there's this relationship that Jesus is saying, I am, I am like your mother. I am holding you close. In the darkness, I am moving. And there is color and there is brightness there, even when there is no light. We can't do that work at all. Lent is not about the work that we do. Lent is not about making a to-do list of all of the things we need to improve upon. It's not about forcing anyone's hand to make things right. It's not about proving that we are holy or righteous. It's not about anything that we do. It's about sitting down in the darkness of God and letting our eyes adjust. To be transformed by God is to recognize that God is in the work of transforming. And it is not our activity that makes that possible. Like Nicodemus, we come to Jesus in the various night times of our lives. We have no idea where we're going or what we're doing, even if we think we do. We come into the careful work of being transformed by God, who is always awake and always moving. Like Nicodemus, we come to Jesus in the night. Amen. <laughs>